Hello, this is the 11th video in a little mini series that I'm calling Basic Limit Theorems. And here we're going to show that the uh, sample variance converges to population variance. And we're also going to end with the result that uses uh, Slutsky's theorem, which we proved in, in uh, the last video, video 10 in this series. So let's let XJ be uh, ID random variables. And um, this is, uh, it's not the sample variance, but it's, it's I guess it can be, it's a sample variance uh, not adjusted for bias or the, M, the maximum likelihood estimate of the population variance. Um, and it can be rewritten like this. And we're not going to show that. It's pretty common to be able to, to show that. So now, note that xj squared are, that, you know, from 1 to n are random variables. And that's because the xj's are random variables and you uh, uh, the squared function. So f of x squared is a continuous function and continuous functions of random variables are random variables. So xj is a random variable. So we can talk about uh, its expected value, which can be shown to be the variance plus, you know, the mean squared, which we write like this. So this is the variance plus mu squared. Um, and since this is a random variable, we can um, we can use the law of large numbers. We can take the mean of this variable, which is what this is. So the strong law of large numbers says that this conviews, converges, you know, almost surely to its expected value, which which is this. So this by the strong law of large numbers converges almost surely to sigma squared plus mu squared. The weak law of large numbers says that this also converges in probability to sigma squared plus mu squared. Okay. So let's note that x bar converges almost surely to mu and x bar you know converges in probability to mu. That's also by the strong law of large numbers and the weak law of large numbers. And the and by the continuous mapping theorem, and that and that says that um, if you take a continuous function of these uh, these variables, then it also converges in probability. So if we if we take the like the squared of x bar, it converges into the square of mu. So, which is mu squared, and so by the strong law of large numbers, we know these con x bar converges to mu, and by the continuous mapping theorem, we have this result. Okay, so this first piece here is the law of large numbers converges to this piece here, and then the uh, law of large numbers and the continuous mapping theorem says that this converges to mu squared. So, and then, of course, the mu is canceled and it's sigma squared. So, this estimate, the sample variance, you know, not adjusted for bias, converges to sigma squared, which is the population variance, almost surely and in probability. So, to, uh, to write it more concisely, so Sn squared converges to sigma squared, almost surely and in probability. So let's look at that a little bit. So here's a couple notes that if you divide both sides by sigma squared, then this ratio converges to 1. So now if we also multiply this side by another convergence series, um, you know, like say converges in probability, then the product converges in probability. And so what we do is n over n minus 1 is a sequence that converges to 1 and so and then this we know converges to 1 so the product converges to the product 1 times 1 which is 1 and then why do we write it like this well here we're dividing by n so this n cancels with the n in here and then we divide that by n minus 1 which is the sample variance adjusted for bias which is the sample variance that we all calculate when we calculate the variance. So this shows that the sample variance adjusted for bias
converges in probability to the population variance, sigma squared. But we'll, I'm going to write it like this because the next result we're, is going to be helpful to see it like this. So this proves that the sample variance converges to population variance. So, but let's look at this theorem. Let's say if uh, x1 through xn are ID with mean mu and variance sigma squared, then the following holds. The, that this, 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 uh, this, this right here converges to uh, standard normal in distribution. And also this converges to uh, standard normal in distribution. And so let's prove the, these results. So, we know by the sensor limit theorem that this converges in distribution to standard normal. Take the mean minus its expected value divided by the standard v deviation multiplied by the square root of n. That converges by the central limit theorem to standard normal. And then we just showed that this converges in probability to 1, which is a constant, not equal to 0. Right? So that means by Slutsky's theorem, that this divided by this converges in distribution to a standard normal divided by 1, which is just standard normal. And so if we look at this ratio, we take this piece here and divide it by this piece, which is equal to this because the n's cancel, the n minus 1 comes up top, that converges in distribution to standard normal. And so we're finished. So this piece is done. Now for this piece, we just leave off this, this constant here, n divided by n minus 1. You leave it off here, and then this becomes just n, and it converges in standard normal. So it's the same. Um, and so I just wanted to use Slutsky's theorem, which we proved last video. Um, and so that's all I have for today. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, uh, like the video if you did, and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.